hello, welcome back to this tutorial. We're going to um, start this one where we finished off last time around with our Hello World program. So computers work with all different types of information and when we're programming with these we call them variables. So they work much the same as a mathematical variable you might have seen in your maths class or math class if you're in America. Um, where you'll have something like say x which has got the name and it may have a value so say x equals 42. So when we're working with computer programs it works much the same sort of way except the computers can work with a much wider range of types of information so rather than just numbers they can work with different types of information. So for Hello World we've been working with a type called a string which is with our text and we've been using the string with the values typed directly in. So what we could do with this program is we're going to start to modify it and to start to separate out this idea of a variable. So you've probably already modified your own version of this program and put different text within the inverted commas. Now we're going to change it and remove the inverted commas entirely and we can put in say a number. So where we could change it to put the number inside the inverted commas and have 42 which will work, it'll display 42. We can also remove the inverted commas and have the computer see the 42 as not just a string of characters, a 4 and a 2, but as a number with actual value. Now when we just display it, of course, it works exactly the same sort of way, but what we can do with it is start to do some other things with it, so we can add other numbers to it. So in this case, it will take whatever's in the brackets, it will calculate it and display the total of the calculation, whereas if we treated it as a string, so we put it back inside our inverted commas, we can see that it's just displayed the equation as we typed it in. Similarly, if we put each of the numbers as text and put a plus between them, the plus behaves a little bit differently. What it does, it basically links the two strings, puts them next to each other, and you can see there we've got 4, 2, and 3 just displayed one after the other with no attempt to combine them as if they were numbers. So now we've looked at two different basic types of um, variables we have in programming or in processing. Now we're going to create them as a specific value. So let's go back to 42, sorry not as a specific value, as a specific um, da uh, variable name. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a, value, a variable and we might say call it, uh, let's call it x. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to be working with whole numbers here or integers. So we'll create our variable called x. But the first thing we need to do is tell the computer that we're working with an integer type. So we type in int x. So what this does, this creates a variable call of type integer. So we, it can only be a whole number value and it has the name of x. So we can create a whole lot of different variables if we like. Um, and we just give them different names. And now, instead of printing 42, what we can do is print x. But x doesn't actually have a value yet, and we can see here in our errors line that it's got it's complaining, it's saying we haven't got a value for x yet. So what we need to do up here is give x a value. So we can say x equals 42, remembering to put a semicolon after each of our statements. Now one thing to remember in programming, and this will come up more as we learn if statements later on, is that the equal sign is actually a command rather than a check or a statement of fact. So in this case, what it's saying is make x equal to whatever is on the other side of it. So in this case, take 42 and pass that value into x. So after this statement has been executed, uh, x has already has its name of x, but now it has a value of 42. And then when we print x, what we should find is that it takes whatever's in here, it says, OK, we want x. What you really mean is the value of x, so it will then display 42. Let's see how we go. And again, we see the, the uh, sketch window comes up, but 42 has been displayed. So we can now change that, and we can say if x is, say, for, let's go back to our other equation before, so 42 plus 3, and now when we display that, we get 45. So this line here has actually made x equal to 45, um, because it's calculated this and made the total of the calculation into x, and then printed out the value of x as it stands when this line is, is run. Now a quick thing to note here is that the lines of code are executed in turn. So if I copy this line of code and 
put it down below and say oh, let's make x equal to 3 down here when we run it the value of x is 45 at this point in the code so that's what's displayed even though down here it changes back to 3 so that's just a little thing to keep in mind when you're debugging your code is that the commands are executed in turn so if you make some change here then don't expect that change to be reflected in what is printed out here okay so now we've created the idea of a variable of a whole number variable so what happens if we want to have numbers that aren't whole numbers so let's say we want to have uh, let's call x say 3.14 now you'll see here it's complaining it's saying we've um, made x equal to something that can't be being an integer so we need to change the data type and this is where we come across the other main type of number in processing and that's called a float so a float is basically a number that isn't a whole number or at least isn't necessarily a whole number so now you can see all our error messages have gone away we've said we've got this variable called x and this time around instead of being a whole number it's a float or floating point variable and that allows us to have um, the fractions and decimals and all those other partial values that aren't whole numbers now when we run our program we can see that 3.14 is displayed down here now where programming varies a little bit from mathematics is that we can have non-numerical or non-number variable types so I can have a string of x now in this case we need to then make x equal to a string so in this case I've made it equal to hello world now when we display x we get hello world so we can make our variables of all the different types as long as we only try to make them equal to a value that matches the type of variable we've got so if we try to make x equal to hello world when we've made x a an integer then it, the program is going to complain and different programming languages have different degrees of complaining about these things so if you work with something like say javascript you'll find it tends not to complain about very much at all and it will quite happily work with variables that are mixed up uh, processing is fairly strict but it, it does tolerate a fair bit so let's have a look here now something else with variables unlike mathematics where we tend to have single letter variable names in programming it's common in fact a very good idea to have longer variable names so when we have a large number of variables in a program it's easy to keep track of which is which so we can create a variable called message and then we can make message equal to hello world and we can print the message and we should find that that in fact just does exactly the same as before but instead of calling it x we've now called it message we can also combine variables of different types so if I have message of hello world um, I can now create another variable so say int is our value I can say the value equals 42 so I can say might change our message to the value is and then I can type in print the message plus the value now in this case I've combined two different types of um, variable and processing is generally pretty good at um, making a decent guess at what you're trying to do but you can get yourself into trouble um, and the program will behave a bit strangely if it guesses something different to what you actually wanted to do so in this case what it's done it's it's decided that we're trying to combine a number with a string so chances are you want these things put next to each other so it actually treats value as if it's another string and puts it next to each other so it will usually make a pretty good guess but just be aware that um, sometimes it'll guess incorrectly and you can get around it by doing what's called a recast and you can explicitly tell the program or tell processing that you want to treat one variable as another type of variable uh, we won't go into how to do that in this tutorial but just be aware it can be done and sometimes you'll need to do so now when you're combining strings one thing to remember is that it won't automatically put spaces in there for you if you want to have a space you need to put it in there so let's put a nice space in there and that way there's a a bit of a gap and it looks a bit nicer 
So through this tutorial we've looked at creating different types of variables, we've created um, integers, we've created floats which are non-whole numbers and strings which are um, strings of text or lots of characters put together and how we can then display them and in some form combine them.